Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, just is the reigning comeback player of the year. Whoa. He came back. Mm-hmm. Yes, he did. And when he came back, he came back and said, uh, do you remember who the hell I am? And in his first game back against the Rams, he reminded everybody. Yeah. Five step, all goes. I'm going to overthrow all these wide receivers by 15 yards. Yep. Mm-hmm. Just to remind them that 75 yards is still in there. Mm-hmm. Just a little, maybe a reminder myself too. Sure. You know, maybe Absolutely. I've been thrown on fields in between Ubering my kids from place to place with five kids. I've been thrown on like park fields that don't have yardages. Mm-hmm. And if they do have yardages, I don't know if they're accurate or not. So just a little feeler here. I'm gonna throw this thing 80 yards. Mm-hmm. Just a reminder to everybody in the building. Then he would go on and just lead a team to the playoffs. No big deal. Easy. Then the quarterback market seemingly came and went. We had no idea where he was gonna go. Is this guy gonna retire? Is he going to come back mid-season again? What's the deal? Oh, he lands on the Super Bowl contending Indianapolis Colts just yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, Super Bowl champion, Joe Flacco. Yeah, Yeah, thanks for the introduction. I like it. (laughs) It's true, too. We know you just overthrew it by 15, 20 yards just to show everybody. I I want to let you know. Hey, Joe, I want to let you know, you made the right decision. Coming to Indy, <laughs> so happy, Joe. Welcome to the city, pal. Now let's talk about it. Were you the quarterback market? We saw a bunch. We just rattled them all off. Jameis, Jacoby, Gardner, Marcus Mariota. Uh, you just, all of these names. Like People are signing them different places. Okay, boom, bang, bow. Your name not coming up anywhere. Were you contemplating waiting until like after the draft or training camp or season like you were like like what was the whole process and were you talking to any other teams how'd we end up at Indy you think Joe because I'm pumped about it and thankful for it you know mostly not not a not nothing not nothing against the other guys but mostly when I'm sitting around watching everybody get signed I'm looking at my wife and going what the hell is going on like I can't sign anywhere am I gonna am I not gonna sign anywhere what the hell is going on here um so yeah, uh, just kind of that's mostly what was going through my mind. I mean, I was ready to I was ready to see what was going to happen, and um, probably had a few ideas of what may happen. But you're always wrong when you when you know when when you when you when you try to think of where you might end up. You you really have no idea. At least that's the case with me. So so you're saying there was not a lot of chatter as you're watching everything happen. You're kind of just watching it unfold, wondering what the hell's going on. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Joe, I have no. Why is that? You think because you're old as hell now? You're the comeback player of the year. What do you think it is? I don't know why. I don't know why. Um, but listen, I, 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 I. Once again, I, it's not for me to worry about. I am really excited about you know going to Indy and and and, and working with their young guy and being back with Shane, uh, who I was with a few weeks in in, in Philly. Um, they obviously had a really good team last year that was ready to compete. Um, so I'm excited about going out there and getting to meet some new teammates and have a new experience. So the getting signed before OTAs and training camp and everything is obviously different than it was last year, but that's something I assume you wanted to be a part of. And us as Indianapolis Colts fans, Anthony Richardson, the quarterback that we drafted with the number four overall pick before last season, electrifying dude can spin it i mean he can do everything wasn't able to protect himself last year maybe we didn't protect him they took some shots he ended up tapping out of like three of the five games and then obviously didn't play the rest of the year so gardner Minshew played a lot of football for us gardner Minshew was like shane steichen's first quarterback with the colts he that offense is awesome what do you know about the offense do you feel like you are a successful quarterback in that offense because it felt like it was a lot of Gardner slicing and dicing, and that's what Joey Flacco does. Okay. Don't get me too excited here, Joe, but aren't you perfect for <laughs> the situation in Indianapolis right now? You know, I spent a, just – it wasn't a lot of time in Philadelphia, but I, I really do think the guys that um, are there and then Shane, who's now in Indy, I, I really do like a lot of what they did. I, I would have been excited um, a couple years ago back then to be able to play with – you know with, with with this offense, with those guys. So, um, you know, I, I, I think they do an unbelievable job. I think Shane does a really, really incredible job with everything on that side of the ball. Um, you know, and like I said, it was a small sample size, but I was really impressed with, with what he does and excited about the opportunity to, to kind of be in that a, a little bit longer. All right, we're pumped to have you. Uh, you, you got a 
What do you got? Throwing net behind you there over your left shoulder? How, are we still? Oh, dude. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> other way. Other way. Net. I can't. Yeah. I mean, that's. I don't. I wish my kids would use that. I can't figure out how to do this. I wish my kids would use that a little bit more, but I don't think that's getting any use. Do you, oh, you don't use the, that? Is it I, in my head? I just saw you full helmet. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. No. Dripping sweat. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not using that. <laughs> Oh! Yeah, there, there it goes. I think that's exactly what I have. That's pretty much exactly <laughs> exactly what that is back there. Yeah, shot. Hey, nailed it. Yeah, I'm pretty pumped about this. Anyways, all right. Uh, <laughs> Ty has a question for you, Joe. Yeah, Joe. Going into the off season, uh, were you initially like when you're looking at places, knowing how many teams needed quarterback? Were you thinking like, hey, the expectation is that I'm going to sign somewhere and hopefully start, um, given how well you played last year, or did you know, hey? There's a good chance that wherever I may wind up, uh, I'm probably going to have to go in as a backup role again, and then hopefully just when my number gets called, I'll play like I did last year. I think there was probably a little bit of uh, – uh, at a certain point, I was probably a little bit hopeful that maybe I'll get a chance to, you know, go compete or be a bridge somewhere um, and, and be able to at least show, um, you know, whatever I can and help a team win some games and, you know, make that last as long as possible. But it wasn't like it was a, a guarantee in my mind that I was totally, um, you know, happy with some of the roles out there that were going to require me to be a backup. And, you know, I felt like I, you know, proven that, like, I can do that in multiple ways, whether that's be a good teammate, uh, be good for the quarterback room or come in and win games and, and when I need to and help the team stay where they want to stay. So, you know, I. I, like I said, I probably there's probably a little bit of hope that maybe I would get a chance to actually play somewhere from the very beginning of the season, but it wasn't something that was like, oh you know, yeah, that's definitely going to happen, and I need that to happen. Um, so you know, I I listen. I've been around long enough to know that like, hey, you can hope for certain things, but you also have to prepare yourselves for for other things and and find the positives in that. So. Well, so you just said a lot there about being a backup quarterback and helping the quarterback and adding to the quarterback room, then coming in and playing and winning games if I have to in the middle there. Like, this is going to be Anthony Richardson's rookie year pretty much because he had surgery, right. was away from the building, you know. Uh, so this right. year, we're assuming. Yep. Come on, God. Please, football God. Whichever one. Whichever one. <laughs> is listening, you know, whichever mm -hmm. football gods, please. Mm -hmm. Hopefully he's around the entire season. Now, obviously, with the way the NFL is now, he might miss a game or two, whatever the case is, this is it. But being in the building, being around the NFL every single day was something he wasn't able to do last year because of the surgery and being out of there. And I don't think that it is the job of a veteran to teach the ways of their draft replacement or their backup if the person is the starter. Like, I think it's right. come out a couple of different times with numerous different players. Like, he refuses to help the guy that they drafted number 20. Yeah, yeah like, th those stories have come out. And as players, uh, I'm like, that's not. the worst. That is not this it's person. Yeah, exactly. But, but. No. With that being said, sounds like your mindset, though, at this stage is like, you understand that you're coming in to kind of teach Anthony Richardson the game a little bit behind the scenes. Is that well, true? Well, listen, I've gotten criticized for that before. Like, you know, no, I'm not a mentor. Like, there's a quarterback coach. There's an offensive coordinator. There's so many people that go along with doing this type of thing. But at the same time, like, we are a unit as a, as a room. We spend so much time in that room together. And, you know, like, how many 39-year-old backups are in the league that have played as much as I have? I mean, it'd be stupid for me. Like, it's not like I'm a super selfish person. Like, we're going to be in that room so much together together there's always conversations that come up about how we're going to do this. How do we see it? How's the read? What's it like versus this coverage and that coverage? And I think a lot of the times there's a tendency to overthink things at, at any level. And I think there's, there's just very simple, easy ways that I can be in that room and say, Hey man, it's just football. Like on this play, you just have to get your eyes here and be ready to throw it. And if it's not there, then, you know, it's, it's simple little things. And, I, so, like, yeah, I agree with you. I hate when they bring up that mentor thing. And, hey, are you going to be sitting in the room with this guy for 20 extra hours a week and doing all this stuff? And it's like, no. But, <laughs> but you, you know. But I have a job, too. Simple, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, I have a job. Yeah, but there's, there, there's very simple ways to help, to help each other out in, in terms of how do you see this versus how do you see that and simplifying it so that when you get to the line of scrimmage, you can play as fast as possible and play football the way you know how to play football. 
And, and that's the most important thing is like, how, how can I play as fast as possible? And even though this isn't my backyard, even though this isn't the schoolyard and I'm not 12 years old, how can I put my mindset in that type of atmosphere to trick myself into thinking that's all this is and remind myself it is just football. And I think, you know, I think that I can, you know, bring the room down to that level and, 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 and be that reminder. And at the same time, like I said, I think it's also important, like, Listen, this league's supposed to be about winning above all else, right? So I think it's important to have a backup that you believe can come in and win games for you if they have to. So I believe that, you know, I obviously have a lot of confidence in my ability to do that. Um, so hopefully these guys feel the same way. Well, let's keep that confidence yeah. forever, okay? Because you quarterbacks, once you lose it, it's gone forever, Joe. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's gone forever. That's right. There's a chance. That's right. Punters, the same thing. Punters, kickers. Golfers, you've only seen a couple like be able to bounce back from hitting the oh I'll never be able to do this again and then all the way back. So I have yep. I, oh that's the whole Joe Flacco elite thing. Mm -hmm, oh mm -hmm. now we're into the whole <laughs> yep. now we're into that whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean you, you brought it up, not me. Just want to let you know that. But I appreciate you saying that and talking about that about like yeah I'm there like I'm I am here to help and I'm here to point things out. But also, it's okay to show the show the young guys, this is how you work, too. Like, mm -hmm. hey, here's how practice sure. is. Here's how these reps are. Here's how I watch film. Here's this whole thing. And nobody ever talks about it. They're like, well, you going out of your way to teach him how to film? It's like, he can watch mm -hmm. me watch film because I don't have time. Right. I'm trying to figure right. out the Houston Texans, D'Amico Ryan's defense. I don't have time to try to figure out why he can't learn mm -hmm. that entire thing. We're trying. To, it's a wild, like, kind of narrative that got started. I don't know how many years back, and it seems to still remain in some places. But we're changing it, Joe. We're changing it. You have been around a long time, which leads to this from Tone Diggs. Yeah, Joe. You, I'm I'm getting old, not as old as you, but uh, oh. <laughs> in my older days, I get I get I'm getting pretty cold. Okay. And you've been in you've been in Baltimore, Denver, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Cleveland. Uh -huh. Okay, you've been in, in Philly. What? Those are all very very cold places. The Jets. What? Have what? you thought about hey November December? I'm going to be indoors inside of Lucas Oil. I could be down in Houston. I could be down in Jacksonville. Have you thought about how nice that's going to be? Yeah, a little south. It, it is. It is a little. It's a little different. I mean, Florida, Tennessee, obviously a dome. Um. You know, everybody in that division is also a tax-free state besides ourselves. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you haven't thought about you that know, at all, uh, huh, Joe? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, no, it is actually, it's, it's interesting to think about because you're right. You know, no matter how much, like, listen, I think I, I, think I thrive in cold weather games and I, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm more capable of doing it than anybody, but at the same time, I'm still sitting in that locker room before the game like, God damn it, we got to go out there and play in 20 degrees. It's supposed to rain. What's that mean? No, I don't want to deal with that. So I'm just like anybody else. Like, I don't want to deal with that stuff, man. It's going to be great to be able to close that roof up and, well, you know, just go out there and sling it around. Joe, if you guys are winning games, Jim will decide to shut that roof. Yep. If you guys are losing games, look at the show. <laughs> yeah, check yeah. it out. Look at the show. He's selling tickets yeah. on that roof. Being, yeah, I'm yeah, just, yeah. Because he has a suite that has a. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Enclosure. He's closed in. He's closed in no matter what. Yeah, and I've heard there's a chance there's a even a, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, a, a, vent. A, yeah. a vent out there. We're sitting out there, 45 <laughs> degrees, sunny though. Yeah, sunny. Sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful stadium. You're gonna love it. Mm -hmm. Indianapolis people are gonna be very pumped that you're here too. Wait till you see and feel this Colts fan base. It's new. It's a brand new fan base. Same right. fan base, but like new chapter, mm -hmm. seemingly, with right. Shane Steichen and Anthony. Cool. We're going to be pumped yep. for you to get out of here. Last question now. You know, you're a good guy. Great guy. Great guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if everybody feels that way. Connor's got a question for you. Yeah, Joe, obviously <laughs> the way you played at the end of the season was incredible. And, you know, how the awards ended up panning out. Um, you were nominated to be a finalist for Comeback Player of the Year. And I believe you came out and you said, like, hey, what am I coming back from? Am I wiping my kid's ass? Like, that's not something that you win awards <laughs> for coming back from. But, you know, ended up winning Comeback Player of the Year. Uh, did you get a chance to go up to DeMar Hamlin and say, like, hey, I'm sorry I won this. You, you died. <laughs> you literally I, died on I the should field. not be the one hoisting this award. Uh, or did you uh, just kind of the take the award and leave? Sorry yeah, about how'd it. that go? I, I did not. I took the award and left, apparently. I did not say anything to him. Oh, that's kind of oh. a mentor quarterback. Jeez. Jeez uh, no, hey, I, 
believe me, there was part of me that there, I, I did feel bad about that. I, and believe, ask me any of my friends. I was saying it to them as well. And my wife, I, you know, Hey, I, it's not like I needed that thing. And I would have been, <laughs> I, I it would have been great. It would have been great if they gave it to him. But at the same time, there is a party that like, Hey, when you go out there and play well, you like to be recognized a little bit for it. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's not, it's not like I hated getting the, the award, but it, 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 it it did I did feel very guilty, of course. Like, oh my gosh, I wouldn't come back player in the year that Demar's up for it. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, a couple of my buddies were teasing me about that, which is all. It's all good. But what? no, I, I did not say anything to him personally. <laughs> all right. Well, you, you can, we will use this message. We'll send it to him. Yeah. Hey, Demar, he, he felt feels bad. The same yeah. way. He, well, he, yeah. he felt. He's yeah. a human. Yeah, he has a brain. Uh, did Tommy Flacco? Uh, Tom Flack, yeah. Flack. What what do you guys? Do? So it's your A's. Is it? And where are you? Where's this accent? This is Baltimore. Where's this from? It's a Philly accent. It's probably the A's. There's a couple different things. It's like, yeah. What? Yeah, water. You, got, you guys O's. say like assholes. You say water. Like water assholes over there. No, we say we, yeah we say water, but I've I've dropped that. Oh yeah, and right. we don't and we don't and we don't say say like listen to how I say asshole. You know, see that's yeah. different than how. It's like it's not it's not like ah it's a more of a it's that long drawn out a feels like yeah. you got that a with like the two dots above it I don't know how it's uh, pronounced um, not, yeah it feels yeah. like that is uh, what your a's Shane, are Shane Shane makes fun of me because I I'm always going yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, so he he uh I he called me uh last night and, he, and then that, that's how he and that's how when i answered the phone that's the first thing he said to me yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> hey shane's awesome shane, are you older than yeah him? no he's a lot of fun are you older than him i don't know how old shane is i know he's really good friend like him and austin collie uh went to high school together yeah, you're older than Did Shane. You know you're older than the head coach. Congrats, you made I it. Wanna, no, I want to say Shane's older than me. It says he's 38 on the internet. You're 39, right? Uh, I'm 39. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you're older than your head coach. You made it. This is a long time. It's incredible. This is a long time in the league, pal. This is a really impressive run. You should be proud of you. That's why you're winning comeback player of the year. Amen. Yeah. That's why you're doing it. Hey, we appreciate you, Joe. Safe travels over here to Indianapolis. Anything you need from us in the city, actually, like mm -hmm. any – Pretty plugged in here. So mm -hmm. anything you need, we are grateful for. Yeah, I, I got a couple houses for sale. If you want to? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. So we appreciate. I need one for. I need. I need one for rent, not for sale. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not your landlord, Joe. I'm not fixing your pipes, all right? You either buy the house or you don't. We saw how much you just got paid at 39. Anyways, we appreciate the hell out of you, brother. All right, I appreciate it, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Flacco. Yeah. yeah. So happy he's on our team. Yeah, yeah that awesome. accent is awesome. My wife' immediate response was not as Juice. positive as I had hoped for. She's a Colts fan. Obviously. Why is that? Mm -hmm. I don't know. She said, "How old is he?" That was her first question. It's like it's not about that, man. Old enough? It's a one-year deal. He's thirty-nine years old. He's playing like he's twenty-six again. What are we even talking about? Especially with Shane Steichen's offense. He just won Comeback Player of the Year over a guy that died. Yeah. What yeah. are we even? It's a big deal. What are we even talking about in this entire thing? And she said, "Well, we had Phil Rivers. I said he he took Colts Playoff. playoffs. Almost beat. Oh, the should have won the Bills. Yeah. 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 Then Carson Wentz. She well, said. That was then it. Matt Ryan. She said. She's, well. right, she's right. And there. then now we got Joe Flacco. I'm like, I get. I okay. Makes sense where you're coming from. Flacco's different. Yeah. Very different. Flacco's a bit different because he's not being named the automatic starter. No. Mm -hmm. He knows his, hey, listen, I'm mm -hmm. in the room trying to make the room as good as possible. If they need me to play, which is very feasible yeah. with how Anthony Richardson's season went last year, it's like he can win some games, especially in um, Shane Steichen, who's younger oh, yeah. than him's offense. <laughs> like, you know, he can yeah. move if he has to. Now, I don't know how long those hamstrings are going to last. True. You know, 39 trips around the sun, normally hamstrings will get a little bit tighter, mm -hmm. a little bit weaker, but we've seen people in the past, and he was scampering a little bit last year, I think, oh, even yeah. in the surprise of himself. Oh, yeah. yeah. But he can spin it, and, like, Shane draws people open. So it's a perfect signing for the Colts, and I'm pumped about it.